So in this episode, rather than just have me jump in a brand new van and drive it around for half a day and then give you my first impressions, it's more useful to find out what real people are using it for real purposes in the real world. So today we have come to the spectacular Brecon Beacons National Park to speak to somebody who does just that very thing. Bigger range is not always better. So on this episode, we're looking at some of the smaller vans that are currently on the market. And in this instance, we're looking at the Renault Kangoo Z33. Now this is the long wheel base variant. You get a short wheel base one as well. And this particular model has got five seats inside. Uh, it also comes with two seats if you want. And the five seats, the back seats do fold down though to give a bit of extra room. However, more on that later on. What if we thought would be far more useful than me just jumping in for a quick drive and giving you a first impression is to speak to somebody who's really been using this van in the real world in real conditions over many many months so let me introduce you to Kevin from the Brecon Beacons National Park so Kev you've been how long have you had the uh, the Kangoo? Uh, we've had it since uh, December it was basically one of the first electric fully electric vans we added to our fleet and what's the stuff you use it for it's used for two purposes really it's our education officers use it for education outreach and getting the message out to schools and the national park hence the five seats but it's also got a second purpose which is to help with the grounds maintenance of this 40 acre site so basically the bulkhead falls forward and you've got quite a long van so it's actually enables it to do two purposes a few specs to start off with the 33 refers to the 33 kilowatt hour battery which is an upgrade from the old version of this which is a 22 kilowatt hour battery and that battery that power from that drives the electric motor which is an r60 it's a 59 brake horsepower uh, electric motor which uh, says an r60 and that's a smaller version of the r90 which is in the very successful Renault Zoe, one of the most successful electric vehicle cars really on the road today. So that, for me personally, gives me a lot of confidence because I don't proclaim to be an electric car expert, but when I speak to people who I think are, like Robert, for example, you know, he raves about the Renault Zoe, it's doing really well, it gets great reviews, so the fact that there's components from that car in this van does give me a little bit of confidence. We found the range on this in the winter when we first had it, you're talking about 100 miles fully charged in the winter and we are the hilly Brecon Beacon, so yeah. you've got a lot of, uh, it's quite cold up here. In the summer, you'll easily get 120. If driven carefully, you'll probably get about 140 uh, miles, out of it. but it's all about driver training and people getting used to maximizing the regen braking on it. See, that's interesting because um, even Renault say that they're saying 75 miles in winter, but it seems in reality, that it performs better in winter than even Renault think. Uh, yeah, um, there's two different options on it. We've actually gone for the version that has the heat pump, which okay. has a slightly higher range, so it's okay. got the air conditioning. There is a third version, which I believe they do, which has a, a paraffin heater, but we thought as an environmental organisation, it would defeat the object of yeah. actually getting a car, than, <laughs> an electric car, and then burning a the fuel to heat it. So that, that heat pump, that's the one you can you can plug in, you can preheat the, the car before you Yeah, it's it. basically it's the more advanced air conditioning system yeah. that's shared with cars like the Renault Zoe. Yeah. So uh, by default, you can get it without that, which has a conventional resistive heater, which does take quite a lot of power, but the heat pump version is a bit more efficient. But in practical terms, what that means is you can, you can plug it in while it's charging. You can then preheat yeah. the car on a, on a cold winter's day. Yeah but that's drawn probably from the mains rather than the yeah, battery. Yeah, unfortunately, so it's not quite as clever as a Zoe. You can't do it on an app, oh, wow. but you can, you, do, you can go in it and actually set it well, to be frost. It's so. a working vehicle, isn't it? You can increase the range, if you like, by driving a bit more conservatively. And one of the ways you can kind of enforce that upon yourself is there's an eco button down here by the handbrake um, which if you press all it really does is it it kind of dulls the acceleration so if you smash your foot to the floor it won't give you as fast an acceleration as it would do if you had eco off but that means you're effectively 
being forced to drive more conservatively. So it's a good idea if you want, maybe not as much fun, but it will give you more range. But frankly, if you want a fun drive, this is probably not the van you want to be driving. One of the things that I like on the Renault website, actually, even though we're talking about vans here, is they've got a little range calculator. So you can go on there if you want to get a, an idea of, of, actually not just what the Kangoo will do, but give you an appreciation for, for, for what vans will do in general. It's quite a handy tool. So you go on there, you can look at how fast you're gonna drive, what the temperature is, and how much payload you're carrying, and it will give you an idea of the sort of range you'll get from the van. And also you can select either the uh, standard or the long wheel uh, base vehicle. So for example, we select the long wheel base because that's the one I've been driving. 30 miles an hour, we'll say that I'm driving conservatively. Uh, temperature, let's go for five degrees Celsius, that's what it is today probably, and we'll do 300 kilograms, that's about half, half the payload. Still gonna do 141 miles. And just of interest, if I ramp the temperature down to like minus 15, which is what I might get up, up in Aberdeen, 105 miles. So, uh, you know, it still operates pretty well, even at low temperatures. And then what is interesting, I find, is the, the, how little the payload really affects it. So at uh, 20 degrees Celsius, uh, if it's 149 miles, half loaded, fully loaded, you've lost 10 mile range, that's it. The difference between using an unladen vehicle and a fully laden vehicle is 20 mile. That's all you're, all you're losing range-wise. Anyway. Nice little calculator, just to give you an appreciation of, of how temperature, speed, and load is gonna affect your range. As far as what it's like to drive, if, you, if you're used to driving vans of this type that are diesel, it's smoother, it's got a little bit more pull at the start. It's not super fast and super fun, but that's not why you're buying it, it's a commercial vehicle. But it's much smoother than a, a, a diesel, definitely. Now, as far as how much weight they can take, it's not a huge amount, to be fair, but it is a small van. They're not designed for it to take huge loads. You're looking at about between 600 and 650 kilograms of load in the back, depending on which model you go for. You can have an option to put rear seats in. There's a cab crew to turn it from a two-seater into a five-seater. And what's nice about that is that the, the back seats will fold down and the safety bulkhead will fold in, which effectively turns a five-seater back into a two-seater so um, you've got that option and you lose like a tiny amount of, of volume really where the back seats are folded down but the load length doesn't really change if you still want a lot of load volume but you also want to potentially carry extra people that i think is a big asset of the kangoo over a lot of other bands in the market currently i'll quickly show you how easy it is to put the back seats down that folds there bang and actually you know you've got the same amount of space as you would have if you had no back seats at all, really. Right, a few things worth noting on the outside of the van. First off is the charge point. That is where you plug in to charge up your battery under the badge. And then back here, because it's a, it's a crew cab variant, i.e. it's got a back seat, it's got sliding doors, both sides actually, making things nice and easy. Access to the uh, folding rear seats. And finally, at the back, the back door is a sort of two-thirds, one-third configuration, and that gives you access to your storage space. How do you find the charge and how often do you have to charge in a day? Um, we find because it's a pool vehicle for our organisation, it tends to get charged every night because we don't know the length of trip the person the next day is going to do. But we found that actually on a full charge, it can get to any point in the 520 square miles of the Brecon Beacons National Park and return without charging. And even if we did need to charge it at some points, we've got quite a few charging points dotted around the park because we've deployed over 17 charging points. People shouldn't be looking at getting the van the more strange. Mm. They should be looking at getting the van that has the right range for yeah. how they use it. Yeah, because that's an ideal battery size. We, we had to wait till the bigger battery Kangoo came out because now the power is all we need to get from one point to the other, whereas the, the older, smaller battery one was just that little bit too short yeah. so you couldn't guarantee that you get there and back. And it's got it's got a seven kilowatt charge, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So how do you is that charging six hours from empty? Um, yeah, and at the moment we've our charges here are three kilowatts while we're waiting for a okay. DNO operator upgrade for the site. But basically, we uh, 
you know, it'll charge overnight. So yeah. even if it was totally empty, it'll still be full in the morning. Now, when it comes to charging, it's all about what the van can accept. This van will only accept up to seven kilowatts of power being pushed into it. So it doesn't matter whether you go to a 22 kilowatt um, charger or even something bigger than that, the van can only accept seven kilowatts. It's a bit like you've got an empty pint glass and I've got a three pint pitcher of beer. I can pour that entire pitcher into your pint glass, but by the end of it, you're still just gonna be half one full pint and a wet hand and probably wet feet as well. So what that means is the fastest you can charge this van from empty is gonna be about six hours really. Um, if you plug it in at home into a, to a three pin domestic plug, it's gonna take uh, between 17 to 20 hours to charge, which is impractical really. It's not gonna charge overnight. So with the range of this van and the charging time, it's really aimed at somebody who's doing, you know, 100 plus miles during the day and they can charge it up either at work or, or at home at night. So have you given any thought to vehicle to grid? I mean, that's something we're looking at. We actually have one site, which is uh, one of our car parks, which is actually a completely off grid site, okay. which has got four kilowatts of solar and 10 kilowatts of uh, battery storage. And actually the funny thing about that is it uses something called CAN bus technology to communicate it, which is, so actually it's similar to the battery you have in an electric car, just without the car. <laughs> yeah. So, but vehicle to grid would be great. And the other thing we'd like to do is um, for that center, there are some times when you've got winter where that site, you do need to take a generator. Yeah. Vehicle to grid or vehicle to battery would be even better because we could take one of our larger battery electric cars plug it in and top up the battery rather than using a fuel generator, which I really don't like doing on a yeah. zero emission site. <laughs> Effectively, it drives like an automatic car. So you've got a, a, a selector uh, stick here for parking, reverse, neutral and drive. And then down here, you've got a manual handbrake, which is unusual these days on uh, even even commercial vans, electric commercial vans. But this thing, it's like an, it's like an F-16 power handle. It's a bit absurd, really. Especially when you compare it to the size of the indicators, which is this embarrassingly small nubbin. It's about that size. <laughs> See, we'll get, we'll get a close-up shot of this. It's the size of my thumb, this little thing here. If you look at that, and then you look at the handbrake, and it's like two different cars. It's a very functional vehicle. It's got the plastic floor in to basically wash down. It's not got a huge number of gadgets on it. You get in there and it's a very conventional setup where you'd expect to see a fuel gauge. You see a battery gauge, no color screen. It is, you know, a functional van designed for day-to-day -day business rather than to be fancy in any way. And I think that if somebody's coming from the combustion engine van kind of world into electrics, the fact actually you get in it and it looks and works pretty the same as a, a, an automatic combustion van makes that transition a little bit easier. We're actually in the process of finalising the designs for it, so it will be fully stickered up with the message for this site of how it's charged with solar energy and just to get the message out to schools because we found children in the school groups really get the electric vehicle thing. Yeah. It's very black and white with them. They don't see the gray areas of cost yeah. and everything. They just say, well, if it's better for the environment, why aren't you doing it? Why haven't you got an electric vehicle? And luckily we've been able to get this electric vehicle on our fleet to get that message out there. Vans range from about 18 to about 21,000. That's the short wheelbase. I think this one, the five seater long wheelbase is around about 21, but that's after the grant. Yeah. So it must be roughly in the high 20s to 30 grand before the grant. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's a lot of money initially. So how much do you think you'll save as far as, you know, because if that is more expensive than yeah. the combustion engine equivalent, yeah. how quickly can you recoup that money? I mean, with this, we're, we've got the advantage of renewable energy as well. Yeah. So we'll recoup it a lot quicker than someone who's on mains. But if you get smart with off-peak tariffs, you can charge that fully for, and do 100 miles for you know, not more, much more than a pound. So when you compare that yeah. to a full tank of diesel in the Renault Kangoo, it'll be quite quick that it pays back. And we found that they're more reliable, the electric vehicles, because there's less moving parts. Yeah. So you could find that you can extend the life of a vehicle significantly longer than a petrol or diesel one, especially in this sort of scenario where 
you're going to be doing a lot of start stop driving generally the people who go like couriers and yeah. people that use these vans so that's actually worse on a fueled car than it is an electric car and you you might find your range is even bigger than the distances of 140 in that sort of start stop scenario you, you went for the Rhino Kangoo uh, if that wasn't available if that van didn't exist what other ones would you've looked at yeah. uh, the difficulty we've had is it needs it's a van that needs to serve two purposes for us it needs to take our education officers out with kit and school groups where it needs to be five seats but then it also needs to cover the sort of roles of the country park that you see in the background yeah. so it needs to be a big van and it was the only one with the movable bulkhead so it would need to be something similar so we, there's nothing really that i've found that has that feature no you not. know i mean long term we quite like the idea of uh, the zoe van yeah. when it comes out because yeah. that's an ideal so we used to run a number of fiesta vans and we've actually they're not available anymore and that was a good van for taking stock to our various sites because it's more car like for the drivers because the kangoo is a box van so if you're not used to yeah van it is quite a long vehicle so it sounds actually of all the vans in the market currently that mm. is the, the best van that mm. suits you in, this, in the current situation but mm. if you could change anything about the van what yeah. would you change probably the one thing is to add ccs rapid charging on it because if it had rapid charging it would make it more practical so if we didn't have any pool cars available it could go on longer trips yeah which is but without rapid charging you can't risk that because you can't have someone stick for yeah. seven hours waiting for it to yeah. fully charge again i think the kangoo is a perfect fit for many of the small businesses the sole traders and self-employed people out there from last mile deliveries through to the tradesmen and women and if you're after a simple no frills small van that's got a proven track record then the renault kangoo is probably a pretty safe bet. Well, that concludes this episode and coming up on the next episode of the Fully Charged Van Series, I'm gonna look at vans of the future, some of the concept vehicles that will be coming to market in 2021 and also the, uh, the vans that the EV startups, the likes of Rivian are gonna be bringing to market and what sort of influence and impact they have on the vans that the traditional car manufacturers are currently producing. Apart from that, Obviously a big thank you to our Patreon supporters and our YouTube members and if you'd like to take a look at either of those two the links are below and that would be much appreciated. Obviously like and subscribe to the channel that's again a huge help to us. And apart from that, as always, if you have been, thanks for watching. I'm really jealous of you guys actually going to get uh, a little tour around the factory. That's my retirement. Just yes. live it up for 20 years. <laughs>